Divine Truth Assistance Group Group Assistance Sessions – Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action This recording is from the Developing My Will to Love Group and is part of the Education and Love series. In the How I Feel About Change presentation, Jesus encourages us to consider the necessity and desirability of eternal change in our lives. How we really feel about change and growth. What is going to change if we embrace love? And introduces the four reasons why we resist change. Recorded on the 5th of March 2016 in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. That 20 minutes just bang goes like that, doesn't it? <laughs> okay. All right, well, this uh, particular discussion is on the subject of how I feel about change. And uh, what, what I said to the first group, I'd probably like to say a similar thing to yourselves as well. And that is that uh, imagine for a moment that you're, <coughs> you're just a, a couple, you know, you're in, you're in a relationship, and you've just had a newborn baby. Right, many of you have been in that situation in the past, right, and some even just recently. So, so you've just had a baby, and one of the things, particularly if you're a first-time parent, that really strikes you in that process, isn't it, is the fact that you've got to do everything <laughs> for the child. And, and, the, and that you don't really have a choice, do you? You've just got to do everything for the child, otherwise the child probably won't survive, right? So, so what do you do? You have to change its nappy, you have to feed it, you have to allow it to sleep, you've got to burp it if it's got indigestion and things like that. It, it of course can move its limbs to a degree, and it can scream its lungs out <laughs> when, it's, when it's disappointed with how you're looking after it. Or disappointed with your emotions, one of the two, and and it also um, is it's able to obviously suck. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to breastfeed it or f or feed it milk or anything. So there's a few things that it does for itself, but for the most part, you've got to basically care for it um, pretty solidly. It's a full time job, pretty much in those first few weeks, in particular, isn't it? First few months. And quite daunting for a new parent, actually, because most parents uh, never educate you about that. <laughs> All right, so, so there they are. They're now five years of age, this child, and they're still in their nappy, still laying on their back, still gurgling, still, you know, not being out of control of their limbs, still not eating, still wanting to breastfeed. Imagine now they're 10 years old. And they're still laying on their back, <laughs> they're still gurgling, <laughs> not talking, not, you know, still want to breastfeed, ouch. And, uh, <laughs> and, you know, they still basically need you to do everything for them, change their nappy. Imagine now they're 20 years old and they're still gurgling, <laughs> still, <laughs> you get the picture? Imagine now a 20 year old body still laying on their back. Now, I would say by the time they're 20, you'd think something's wrong <laughs> <wouldn't you? laughs> with the child's development, wouldn't you? You'd be worried about that, wouldn't you? Yes. Yeah, you would. And why we worry about that, and the reason, the reason why we worry about that is because we expect the child to change. In fact, particularly in the formative years, we believe as parents that change is good, don't we? And in fact, if change does not occur how we expect, and nowadays there's like measurements every week, you know, and all these kind of things to measure how change is occurring, and if it's not happening, we're worried. We want to get something done to fix this particular problem, whatever that problem may be. 
That's how concerned we are that change continues from the time the baby is born right the way up until when they're you know, 12, 13, 14. And then we start not enjoying change after that. Have you noticed that as parents? Most parents stop enjoying change. You know, when they're changing into puberty, starting to have arguments with you and, and uh, disagreeing with you and so forth, now you want them to go back to how they were, isn't it? But can you see how for the first, you know, usually the first five to ten years of our life, our parents actually enjoyed us changing. And then something happened that caused them to no longer enjoy change. And in fact, they were happy for you to change until you meet their condition and then after that they are no longer happy for change to occur now God is a different parent to that because God's an infinite being God wants you to be similar to him <laughs> now for you to go from this finite little creature just 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 even when you were first conceived and then when you were born, to this expand, ever-expanding creature, you're going to have to change the entire time. So God actually wants you to change. And yet we've learned from our parents that once we reach the status quo, once we reach how everyone else is, then change is no longer enjoyed or looked forward to anymore. And in fact, frequently change is resisted and, and at times not only resisted but quite violently resisted. So much so that there's still countries on earth where if you change from away from their religious faith or change away from the family's belief systems, they'll murder you to stop you from changing. <coughs> That's how serious it is. We, get, we love the change when they're a child but... But once a person is an adult, there's expectations placed upon them to no longer change. Now this has a severe impact upon how you now view change. So what we want to do in this discussion with you is to help you analyse, again analyse yourself, to see how you view change. Now you can see from our past discussion the one about how I feel about love, that we're going to need to engage a lot of self-analysis here, aren't we? And this is going to require processing through some emotion as well. So even just doing the one thing that we raised with you this morning may take you months of your time. And the same applies to this particular subject, that what we're going to do is ask you to analyse how you feel about change. And once you've identified the things you feel about change, you are going to find perhaps that it might take you months of your time to change your attitude about change. So how do you feel about change? You tell me. If we start, uh, let's start with Cess, and then we'll just work our way down through, if we start at Nat and work our way down. Um, I feel like change is unnerving. Sorry, no, Cess first. Stand up, please, Cess. That's great. I feel pretty terrified. Terrified, okay. That's a good word, isn't it? Because that, that's what most of us probably feel. What do we feel will happen? Isn't it funny how the word terrified comes from the word terrific? <laughs> funny, that. Considering that they seem to have opposite meanings nowadays. Um, yeah. Terrified. Why do we feel terrified? Sess, if you... Uh. The worst I can imagine will happen. Yes, that is exactly how we feel. The worst possible things that could happen will probably happen. So we're far better off maintaining the status quo. Yep. Yeah. Unnerving, like... Um, I don't know what I'm going to expect next. Yeah, so could we again use that word sort of risky? Yeah. You know, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what the outcome's going to be. Um, uh, it's already been raised, but terrified that if I change for the better, 
that people around me will become violently jealous. Okay, so so can we say that that aspect of it is about other people's attack of us? So we're when we change, we're afraid of attack. Yeah. Mm. Particularly from the feminine, for me anyway. Yeah, well, it would be from either gender, depending on our injuries, of course. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Who was over here? If we just, if we can just pass the mic down through the people who've got their hands up, then it makes it a lot faster. So you start the card in. Um, I feel it's un. Sorry. Yep, you're going to have to stay in. Sorry about that. Um, I feel it's uncomfortable. Right. So uh, uncomfortable. Good word. So we're really saying there, aren't we, that that if we want to be comfortable, it's better to not change. That's really what we're saying, isn't it? it? Comfort and change are not synonymous. Yep. No? Um, I'm afraid of um, what I'll lose. Like Is that mic on? <laughs> Something's happened to that mic, I think. It might just be because she's holding it. Can down. you hold it towards yourself? Uh, afraid That's of better. what I will lose or who I'll lose from my life. So afraid of loss, yet yeah, that you'll lose things. <laughs> yep, I agree. Fear of the unknown. Okay, so it's all unknown. You could also add to that things like unpredictable, right? So, fear of uh, not being in control. Yeah, so a lack of control. So a lack of control. I'll just write that down as a lack of control. Yeah. Now on this side, yeah, if you go to Judith and then... I'll become isolated. You'll become isolated, yes, yes. So you'll be alone, yep. It'll make you feel alone, yep. And if we go on this side, who are we up to? Yeah, Jennifer, thanks. It'll make me different from others. Different, yeah, different's never a good thing, is it? That's how we feel. When you were different at school, what happened? Picked on, teased. We go to Ivana down here, Dave up there. Uh, rejected. Rejected, yes. Similar to being different, isn't it? We eventually result in our rejection. Yep. Just depending on what it is, um, sometimes I feel angry about change. Yep. So, yeah, I feel a lot of you have not realised how angry you are about it. <laughs> Obviously, the level of anger is dependent upon the level of fear we have about it, isn't it? You know, protecting our fear about it. Yep. Um, that there's no stability, there's nothing for me to hold on to. So it's not safe and secure? Yes. So, so, so if I write it down in the negative, it's unsafe and it will make me insecure. Yep. Yep. And who's on this side? Anyone? No? Here we just go. You've got to hold that mic. <laughs> uh, Nell, um, how can I cope? Sorry? How can I cope? How can you cope? Mm. Yep, so that's about your ability to cope, isn't it? Yes. So a feeling of, a feeling of uh, I may not handle it. Yes. I may not yes. be able to handle it. Uh, it might be too much for me. Sure. Yep. Good day. Christiana down, down this way. And oh, over there, yep. I feel conditional. Uh, what do you mean by that? Um, I guess so it would be under my controlling change. Some, some change is okay, but other changes so conditional. Okay, so you want to be able to manage it, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want to be able to control it, manage it. So it's similar to control. You want to be able to control it, manage it, uh, just handle a little bit at a time. Uh, like this is why most of you use the language, I'm not ready yet. Do you, do you understand? Because you, you don't believe you're capable of a massive shift. And, and so to feed that false belief, you go, I'm not ready yet to do that. I'm not ready. Yeah. Christiana? Powerlessness. Powerless, yes, good. 
It's terrible, isn't it? Most people feel terrible when change occurs in their life and they've had no control whatsoever. About it. And, and, and this is why natural disasters affect people so much. As I said, there's a hundred million children dying every year from either abortion or from, um, from malnutrition. And yet when a thousand people lose their possessions through some kind of natural disaster, who do we respond to the most? It's those people. Because it, it, it hits into our feeling. Imagine that. Imagine losing everything, how powerless that would feel. It hits into that emotion. Um, that it is hard work oh, sorry, to change. Sorry, yeah. It's hard work, very good, yeah. It's, it's, it's difficult, should I say. And the way people do it on earth, yeah, it's very difficult. The, there's a, the common belief on earth is change is not really possible. A person can't really change. Though it's sort of fixed, you know. Yep. Um, can't cope. Can't cope, yes will not cope, unsafe, insecure. I suppose it's, yeah, let's write it down separate. I cannot cope, yep. Okay, anything, it's Jenny. Um, I want to manufacture or manipulate the way in which <coughs> everything, myself and everything around me changes. So I want to manuf, it's about manufacturing. So what's that about, do you it's, feel? It's completely, what, what, does it come, of, what belief does it come from? It's a devoid of reality. It's not being able to see what's really there. You need to hold up. Please. Sorry. See what's really there. And so I'm. Yeah, it has to do with control and it has to do with not coping. But it, it's more insidious than that. It's about manipulating things. Yeah, I don't know if it is more insidious than that. It's just we choose to manipulate we choose, we choose to manipulate so that we don't have to, in many cases. Yep. Who else? Yep. Uh, it's exposing. Um, exposes your comfort zone. So you feel exposed. And especially emotions come up easily when things are changed out of your comfort zone. Yep, so, so it might be emotional. And that's a bad thing, yes, right? Yes, that's a bad thing, yes. Yep, <laughs> yep. no. All right, now we've got a few words there, obviously. Obviously we could list more, couldn't we? So how's it looking? Pretty negative, yeah. <laughs> Pretty negative, isn't it? Now can you see, if that's how I feel about change, then it's highly unlikely I'm going to change, <laughs> to choose to do it with the exercise of my own will. Can you see that? Can you see that unless my feelings about change change, <laughs> so, so say that again, so you don't, unless my feelings about change change, <laughs> then it's highly unlikely I will change. change. <laughs> yes. So it, it's a big problem how we see change, isn't it, really? A big problem in our lives. And you can see why the majority of us resist it so, so strongly. Yeah. Mm. <coughs> what is all of that, really? So if we come down to Felix, you know what it is, don't you? Everyone knows what it is, pretty much? Ex cool. Excuses? Well, it is. But it's an excuse of what emotion? Um, un, uh, that I, uh, lack of uh, fear, fear of a overwhelm, fear. lack of faith. Fear. Yeah. It's an excuse of fear, isn't it? Yeah. I'm basically saying if we lump all that together, that all demonstrates my fear of change. And I'm basically saying these are all valid excuses. These are valid reasons to not change. That's what I'm really saying to myself. That these feelings that I wish to avoid are valid feelings to avoid and they're valid reasons to not change. Right? And God's looking at you going, I'm sorry. My universe is going to force you to change 
all of my laws will force you to change. I want you to change, because if you don't change, you won't become more like God, right? God wants you to change. And, and you're going, no, 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 no. All of this is really bad news for me. This is going to cause my life to be a disaster. And God's like, no, it's not. It's going to cause your life to be really lovely and smooth. And you know, you'll meet up with your girl or your, or your boy or, or, or whoever. whoever uh, obviously, there's only one of those two genders that you can meet up with. And, and, and you know, be happy and safe and secure and grow infinitely, in fact, is what God's offering you. But you're going, no, 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 none of that's true true none of that's real it's all just in some it's all some utopian dream of some kind let's get real about it is what you're going and you think that's real that's what you believe and yet you didn't believe that when you were little you want to change when you were little you wanted to grow up when you were little you wanted to get new abilities when you were little. You wanted to learn new things when you were little. And yet now, it's like this. It's like somehow something changed where we enjoyed change and now we don't want it. And in fact, most of us won't want it so much that we're willing to kill other people to not have it. That's what an abortion is in the end, isn't it? Killing of another person to, so that they cannot force change upon our life of some kind. We're willing to destroy another life to not have it. That's how bad the situation is. Karen? Um, when, when we're little, it's all physical. and um, is it, is I cannot emotional? agree. It's okay. not all physical. So what's the emotional thing for the There's little? a feeling inside of us when we're little of an openness to discovery, an openness to new things. I'll give you an example. You walk, you walk in the gate here and you look over to your left and over to your left there's a jumping bag. Now just imagine you're six. You see that jumping bag and what are you going to think? i got to get my ride on that jumping bag, no matter what, right? That's what you'd think. So, so what would you do? You know, Mummy, Daddy, can I go on the jumping? Oh, no, son, no, son. Oh, Mummy, five minutes later, can I go on the jumping? Can you please ask the people to go on the jump? Can, you, you're not afraid of making choices and decisions at that point. You just want to have a go on the thing that you know you're going to enjoy. <laughs> you follow? Now you're 30 or you're 50 and you walk in the gate and you look at the jumping bag, what do you think? Oh, God. <laughs> it's like, I'm not going to go on that. <laughs> How crazy is that? That's for the kids. That's what you think. Yeah. I spend a half an hour on it every morning. So my time on that is 7 to 7.30. You're not allowed on it other than that. <laughs> other than that, you can do whatever you want. I even get them to open it for me early so that I can get on there and enjoy myself on it. Right? But this is what we would feel like if we were a child, wouldn't it? We, we'd, we'd want to have that experience. We would be keen to have the experience. That is an emotion. That's desire. We're expressing it. We even try to reason with our parents in order to have the experience. We're even willing to challenge their anger even in order to have the experience. We are. You know, no, don't raise that again. And five minutes later, <laughs> can, I, <laughs> can I go on that? I told you not to say that. You know, like, we're willing to risk the anger of another person when we're five if we really badly want to do something. Don't we? We do it naturally. Mm, interesting, isn't it? Graham, thank you. <clears throat> if we weren't afraid of change as a child but we're afraid of change as an adult is that due to emotional injuries that have occur occurred in our teens well no it's actually due to emotional injuries that occurred to us when we we're a child because you see the projection of an adult towards a child is that the adult wants the child to change to a certain point. But the projection of an, of, of an adult towards an older child is that they want them not to change too much. They don't want them to change into something that the parent finds unrecognisable or challenging to the parent's emotional condition. 
And so we have a very fixed pathway of where we're allowed to change. That's our problem. We're not allowed to change too much. And this pathway is often established quite young, unfortunately, where we, have, we learn that as long as we change within the society norms, the society's definition of love, as long as we change within that, we'll be okay and safe. We'll be comfortable. But as soon as we sp jump out of that paradigm and into another, we're now going to get the projection of our family and society to pull us back into the condition of what's allowed. So then is it all about parental approval? A lot of it is about parental and society approval. Because a lot of it also happened during our schooling years where now parents weren't even present. And this indoctrination occurs where we all have to eventually conform to a certain way of thinking and a certain way of acting. You know, it's like that logical song of, of uh, Supertramp, you know. When I was young, I was allowed to do this, allowed to do that, but now that I'm not allowed to do those things. And, and this is what's happening to us all the time. So we're receiving a whole heap of projections from the environment that we're not allowed. And the reality is, due to violence that's occurred in our childhood, most of us will respond to the projection rather than risk the violence. Right? We're willing to do that. So we, we make the internal decision, the internal choice. It's an exercise of our will to make the choice that we are going to put up with restriction for the sake of safety and security. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Now, isn't this attitude to change very interesting, how, how it's developed over the years? Like how young we can allow, allow certain types of change, and the older we get, the more we don't allow it. And in fact, even within us, the desire to investigate new things gets squashed so badly that we don't even want to risk even investigating new things. Most of you as adults would be afraid to get on the jumping bag because you'd be afraid that you could only jump up and down, that's all you can do, and after a while it looks a bit silly, right? That, that, that we're worried about the world's projections at us in that, in that state. Right? That's what we do. And we do that with a lot of things. And we've got to start seeing that actually this is how the world views change outside of what it collectively believes is normal. And what we've done is imbibe the indoctrination that certain things are normal and therefore tolerable and other things are not normal and therefore intolerable. To the risk of our life, in fact, in many cases, yeah. So it's no wonder we're quite terrified of change, isn't it? Can you see that? So the question then becomes, what do we do about that? What do we do about that? How, how do we change our attitude to change? Is the real question. Because unless we have a different attitude to it, it's highly unlikely we're going to do it. So we, we need something needs to be adjusted, right? Yep. So if we get Dave up the back. Somehow we need to <coughs> release our or change our false beliefs about change. We do, somehow. So Cody. Um, is it um, engaging our will? Well, of course, it's engaging our will. That's our subjects that we're talking about. But, but how do we engage our will to change? That's the real question, isn't it? Like, what do we do? Now, I don't know about you, but one of the things that it, obviously you can see from this analysis of our feeling about change that really dominant, if I just rub a lot of this out and assume that's all still there, and I'll just put... Uh, a little bracket here and say the dominant emotion in all of this is terror, isn't it? Really? Like, not just fear, but terror. 
about change, right? We're terrified of the whole concept of change. Okay, so you can see that's the dominant emotion. And then the question becomes, well, well how, how do I confront that emotionally is going to be the real question, isn't it? Okay. Felix, you want to ask? Well, I feel there's, there's two things that I, I feel of the reason... Of if you hold the mic up. Oh, sorry. Um, one is that the reasons why those bad results happened for a lot of my choices is because they were out of harmony with love. Whereas I always assumed, no, it's because there was change that everything went wrong. The, the second one... Good. Can I just summarise yeah. that then? You're basically seeing now the link between yeah. the cause and the actual effect, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. You, you, and the cause is, I take an action out of harmony with love, yeah. and the effect is going to be, change is going to feel really bad. Yeah. But, but you see, this is the other thing, is that most of us haven't tried to take action in harmony with love to measure the results of that, right? We've only taken actions usually out of harmony with love and, and measure the results of that. And that's caused us to be terrified of change. The reality is, if we do something in harmony with love, then the effect might be completely the opposite of that. I haven't tried that yet. But we haven't tried it, <laughs> yeah. So we don't know. So we just believe the one part of the equation. Yeah. Yeah. Far away. So what was the second? Do you remember? Um, uh, uh, oh, no, I, I can't remember. The, the Sorry, Felix. Was, yeah. <laughs> no, that's yeah. okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, I can't remember the second. So this issue that you've raised of cause and effect, the, join, the joining of a cause with an effect is very, very important for us. What would you call us doing that? This process of us doing that is coming to accept what? That I'm actually, my life is actually governed by predictable laws. Yeah, so, so basically it's coming to accept the truth, isn't it? Yeah. The truth will help us a lot. Didn't we say before that fear is, what did we say before? Fear was false, false beliefs, yeah. right? So how do we remove, remember this is all fear. So how do we remove fear? Can you see truth is going to lead to? The removal of fear. The removal of fear, because it confronts the false belief, does it not? So true, true, the false belief is the result, the fear is the result of being in false belief. If we're in a state of truth, then we would have no fear. Isn't that interesting? We're so resistive to truth, and yet truth is the only thing that is actually going to cause us not to have any fear. And this is all fear. So all of our feelings about change are because we don't want to accept the truth <laughs> about change. That it's good. That it's positive. That it's universal. That everything is doing it. Everything but us <laughs> is doing it. Uh, because we have free will. We can make the choice not to. But everything around us is changing still. Even the world itself, the earth itself is changing still. But we choose to ignore all of that because we think that we're sort of, we, we, we can break the rules, right? And we can do anything we want based on our will. Yeah, I think the second one was something about just having faith that um, there's actually another way other than my fear, bad consequence, fear, bad consequence, addiction, bad consequence. Yep, still a, with that mic, sorry, I'm not here. Faith that there's actually, that something else will work and that I will, like, I have like a big fear I cannot change and so it takes a lot of faith to actually go, I'm going to just trust I can change. Okay, so the issue you raise, very important issue which we will talk about a lot more actually um, in a couple of days time, the issue of faith. Faith is going to help us overcome these belief systems we have that are false. If, if we had any faith in God at all, we would understand that God didn't create a universe where change is going to traumatise us. Can you imagine? It's like God's sitting down there planning, okay, how can I traumatise Dennis? 
Ah, what I can do is I can make this change and I can make that change and I can make this law and I make that law and then Dennis will be traumatised and I love to traumatise Dennis. Now that, do yeah, that doesn't sound like God to me, does it? That sounds like devil to me and no such thing as devil but a person who is purposefully trying to harm you certainly can't be a nice person, right? But that's what we believe God to be, really. That's really what we're suggesting. In our own head, that's what we're suggesting. We're suggesting that God created a universe where it's dangerous to change. That's really what we're suggesting. And you think about how false that belief is. Like, it's an incredible false belief that limits our ability to adjust our life and change. Yeah. If we come to Jenny. <coughs> so, like Ivana said in the previous session, you've got to look at why you're emotionally invested in not changing. It's yep. not just a simple process of making a decision, I want to change. No, because you're emotionally invested in not changing. So Definitely. So let's exa you've raised the issue of emotions. Well, how, how is it that emotions will help us to change? Can you see that if I was willing to feel any emotion... I would probably make changes. But as soon as I'm unwilling to feel any emotion and I start to select my emotions, now I'm only going to change in a certain areas. Can you see that? So a lot has to do with my willingness to experience emotion as well, doesn't it? So we looked at there's truth issues, the law of cause and effect, the God's law stuff is all about truth, right? Accepting the truth about how the universe really works. There's the issue of faith, having some faith that God's good. I said to another group, God is good, and people shot up their hand, and I go, no, just put, all, put your hands down for a second. Let yourself feel that God is good. Because most of you don't believe it. Stop, stop shooting your hands all over the place and just let yourself feel the truth that God is good. God is good. Don't assume God's bad. Don't assume that God, who made the universe, made this crappy universe that is just there to traumatise you. Because that's not why God created the universe. He created a playground for you to play in. Right. So when, you, when somebody says, go and jump on that trampoline or that, that mat out the back there, many of you would feel traumatised even considering it. But, but for a child, how does he see it? He sees it as a part of the playground he's in. Right? And God's created this beautiful playground, universal playground, amazing playground. <laughs> and, and, and we are there going, no, 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 no. This is a place that's just going to destroy me somehow at some time. Right? Not understanding that the things that destroy us are actually coming from within us. So, so truth, faith, emotions. What's another way we could challenge these things, about these beliefs about change? Paul, thanks. <coughs> Um, action, having a go. Having a go, yeah. Having a go, action, taking action. Okay, so now we've redu we're, we're now introducing you to f four things that you're going to need if you're going to ever change. And what we're going to do in two days' time is start to examine your real feelings about those particular things. Truth. Faith, emotions and action. Right. So, so you can see it's essential we look at these things. These are motivators to help us change. Right. And they will confront these false beliefs. And when we confront false beliefs, it rubs out our false beliefs if we process through them emotionally. We rub out our false beliefs, which has the same effect as destroying our fear right so imagine you now feeling like 
you can walk through this world, change every single day, and enjoy, not only just enjoy it, but really desire it because it's so enjoyable. It's like a child going from one playground apparato to another. Right? Just need to have a cough. So the child, you know, the child looks at the slippery dip and says, I've got to go on that. So up it goes, down it goes, up it goes, down it goes, up it goes. Then four or five times it's going, I've got to go on that. So it runs across there, goes on that. Four or five times on that. And I'm looking around. Another thing over there, go on that. That's how a child treats its life, isn't it? Always engaging. Now, if we had that same attitude as adults, we would be always engaging new experiences, would we not? Always engaging new things. In, and particularly if they're in harmony with love, we'd choose to engage them, wouldn't we? But most of us don't do that. Most of us get to a point where we've had so many uncomfortable experiences for the reason that Felix raised, which is that we don't see the relationship between cause and effect. We think that because we've taken actions in the past that were unloving and the result was bad, that that means any action is going to result in bad. We've made this sort of association again. Emotional, it's a, it's a psychological association between change and bad. Change, bad, change is bad in the end. That's what we finish up believing. We've got this association psychologically into believing it because we're not facing the truth that actually bad is caused by or has the cause of something that's out of harmony with love. Out of harmony love is what? Sin. Sin, sin. So out of harmony with love is sin and the results of sin are? Pain. And this is what we're going to discuss with you in four or five days' time. So if I don't sin, what would be the potential result? Sure. Pleasure, right? But, but we don't understand that because we haven't done that. <laughs> so that's all we understand. You follow? And that's one of the reasons why we're so terrified of change because we do something out of harmony with love. We get a result that demonstrates that it's out of harmony with love, which is pain and suffering. And then we get to be in so much pain and suffering that we're too afraid to make any decision whatsoever after that. We're too afraid to do anything. Half of us would be willing to sit down and watch telly for half of our life rather than do something. Not understanding that that is doing something. That also is out of harmony with love <laughs> and not in harmony with the way God designed you to be. So therefore we'll have some negative results. So we, if we're sitting there, watching telly, drinking, eating, getting fatter, 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 and, and then we're getting unhealthy and we're getting, having more and more problems and we go, isn't life terrible? What a bastard God was, huh? creating this terrible life. Because we don't want to see the relationships between truth and happiness and fear and unhappiness. Yeah. My dear friends, I've told you this before, fear is just an emotion. The problem that you guys have, most of you, is that you're not allowing yourself to feel the emotion so you store it. And then you act upon it, and then you act upon it again, and you act upon it again, and you act upon it again, and again, and again, and again. Because you're just unwilling to feel it. If you chose to feel it, it would be gone. Then you wouldn't have to act upon it again, and again, and again, and again. Right? It's just a feeling, it's just an emotion that you need to choose to feel. But most of us decide to not feel the fear, because fear is a terrible emotion to feel, isn't it? Uh, it is often terrifying to feel, so we don't want to feel it. It's a big problem. Felix? <coughs> okay. I feel, um, you know, yeah, fear is fairly uncomfortable, but uh, does, does it 
as you go, does it get more comfortable? <laughs> or because I'm going like, I hope this, I hope this feels better later. <laughs> no, it doesn't get more comfortable. Oh, okay. No, that's th that's the definition of terror. It doesn't get more comfortable, but you do have to get used to feeling it as a feeling, rather than acting upon it. But like, because you've you've obviously um, you know done it. Uh, I haven't completed it, but, Felix. No. But, no, but um, like when you first started, you know, first started challenging fear compared mm -hmm. to you know when you get more used to it. Mm -hmm. Does it? You know, how is the experience different? Surely it's, it feels a lot, um, it, it, it isn't as hard once you get used to it, for, and it would feel be uh, better in some ways. You know? <laughs> it doesn't feel better, but, but you do get used to feeling it. So it's a bit like any emotion that you allow, you then realise you can handle it. So it's kind of like just lifting a weight that used to be 10 kilos, and it, before it was like really, uh, and then now it's, it's like there's a pain, but it's, it's not as... Um, yeah, because you know you can handle. You're not it. resisting the fear anymore, so it's it's quite it's it feels a bit different. Is that is that? Yeah, yeah. You, you know you can handle it. Yeah, okay. You can you can handle anything. In fact, God designed you to handle anything. You know what I've found to be the most powerful influence on uh, with dealing with fear is just having trust and faith that God created me to handle anything. A perfect creation can handle anything, right? You think about that logically. If God did create us perfect, as I'm saying God did, then it would make logical sense that a perfect creation can handle any kind of event or situation. Right? And you can. You can even handle your own death. In fact, everybody who's done it thinks it's quite easy. <laughs> they're, they're now not in their physical body anymore, obviously, and many of them are enjoying their life just as much as or more than they did on Earth. Because... Because they've gone through the process and then they've realised the thing that they were afraid of wasn't so bad after all. Hmm. If we go up to Jeddah. <coughs> um, I was just thinking, it's interesting you're talking about the trampoline thing. Because I've just uh, had an injury uh, a couple of months ago. I went to like a... Trampolines everywhere. Oh, those, those. It's called bounce. Yeah, no, it's yeah. lovely. It's yeah, great there, isn't it? I was it? having the best time. Yeah. And I've walked away with two really bad injuries right at the last sort of five minutes. And yeah. I'm, just, I'm wondering why, like, I was, it felt like such a joyful thing. And then I had the pain, pain after that. I'm just yeah. wondering what, why would that? Sort Can of you see you're asking happen? a personal ex experience? Yes. I've asked not to ask do that. that. <laughs> yeah. And I can give you the answer, of course, but I think, again, you could easily find the answer if you really wanted to. Okay. How? Feeling? Well, who, who educates you, Jed? At the moment? Yeah. Um, not sure. Well, yeah. God is oh, I agree God is trying to educate me, yeah? Yeah, but God, God wants to educate you. Yep. So can you see if you could connect to God with, with his education, he could tell you things like that. Yep. Oh, that's why that particular thing happened, because I felt a certain thing. But it's going to require you going back to the time when the accident actually occurred to see what you were actually feeling. Yep. And what were, were you actually feeling? Time. Can you, can you feel what built up in you through the first parts of the experience? Um, I guess not being that good at it. Yeah, and then what happened? Uh, over time I'm talking about. You, you started out and you are enjoying yourself and yep. having a ball of a time. Yep. Yep. And then just before your accident, what were you starting to feel there? That's what you're going to have to go back to. Okay, see. yep. 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 Sure, yeah, I can't. Really God that. knows exactly what you were feeling at the time. Oh, I can even know. So that tells me that God, <laughs> you can definitely find out from God, right? Yeah. There's a complete record inside of you of what was happening at the time. So my suggestion is sit down and have a feel about what that record is telling you. Was it like I felt like I was at the time trying to ch change things, I guess, and like push through certain things. And enjoy things a bit more, and then. So you, you were trying now to force yourself. Were you not? Yeah. 
into doing more tricky things. Yeah, yeah. All right. In order for, for what reason? Okay. Probably approval, I guess, or... Well, if you think about it, let's, let's put the illustration on myself. Let's say I decide um, that, oh, um, right now I've decided, well, you know, I haven't gone for a bounce on this bounce mat out here. So what I'm going to do is get on it, and I, and I bounce up and down a few times, and then I go, oh, I should try a somersault. So away I go, right, and try a somersault. But if I've never done a somersault before, then what's now happening? Mm -hmm. I'm forcing myself to do something that I'm not ready to do, that I'm not able to do, in fact. So sometimes change... Is no, better. but there's an emotional reason why I'm forcing myself to not understand my own limitations, isn't there? Yeah. And what would those emotional reasons be? And that's what I'm asking you to consider. Sure. You, you weren't considering your own limitations by the end of it. Okay. And there were emotional reasons why you chose to ignore your own limitations. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. Okay. And that's all I'm going to say about the matter. You need to work out what those emotional reasons were. Sure. Follow? Yep. Okay. Any Felix you want to ask? Um. But, but hang on. Um, I just thought, well, in Jada's case, um, mm -hmm. doesn't... Are we going to now get distracted on Jada's case? No, no, no. It's about this, co it's about this Fire away. topic. Um, doesn't, doesn't changing... Um, We'll use use that as an example. Doesn't that risk? Um, I mean, it seems like it would risk. If, if I want to learn how to somersault, I'm going to have to risk an injury. Yeah, you uh, are. You are. Um, so sometimes isn't that pain uh, then not because it was out of harmony of love, but just because I took the risk? Yeah, but there's such a thing as taking a risk without understanding the physics of a of a of an operation, oh, okay. and then understanding the physics of an operation, and then taking a risk. Isn't there? There is, but isn't there still a risk with the with if you don't understanding that you still have? Yes, some but risk? the yeah. risk is much less. Okay. And then there's a lot less risk if you actually do something to challenge the emotion rather than just taking an action. Okay. And there's a lot less risk then, and and Jeddah didn't do that. Okay. He was taking a physical action without addressing the emotion, and it's the emotion that caused the accident, not the physical action. Do you understand? Yeah. Uh. So what he's got to do is yeah. find the emotion. Remember, there's a cause and effect for everything. The causes are emotional. So he's got to find the emotion and then address. that will tell him why he had the accident. But The accident actually happened to trigger the emotion. So you're saying in terms of God's laws, mm -hmm. uh, if he would have done that, um, say, so as you just... Way off topic, but go on. Oh, no, I thought this was in topic. I don't think so. Oh, okay. Oh, I can yeah. ask it during the... Oh, okay. Um, are you saying then that God's laws are, are such that uh, there would be no risk if he did it, as you just suggested? If he had dealt with his emotion, he wouldn't have had a risk. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. The accident happened to trigger the emotion that he wasn't dealing with. Okay. You understand? Yeah, okay. On top of that, if he had found out the physics involved with, with doing the things he was tr attempting to do... Yeah. He would also mitigated the circumstances of him having an accident, okay? Because he'd understand the physics. Yep. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. So if you if you don't understand the physics, and you and you choose to ignore it, and on top of that you choose to ignore your emotion as well, then an accident is bound to occur, is it not? Okay. Yeah. So that's then doing it in harmony with love. Yeah, so you choose to feel your emotions and you choose to understand the physics. So I would not choose to do a somersault unless I knew how to do it. That makes sense. Yeah. Right? Now, I've been doing them since I was six years old, so I, so I do them. But, but, okay. but the average person doesn't understand the physics involved in terms of how it feels to actually do it. You follow? Yeah. So and, so, and so therefore they're probably going to make some mistakes. It would be better if they educated themselves a bit and take steps at it. Yep. That are less dangerous or less damaging. So that's change <coughs> then in harmony with love then? Yeah. Yeah, I see. Because that's so being aware of your limitations. It's allowing yourself to work through the emotions that you have about your fears. <coughs> it's allowing yourself to address the fact you're still going to challenge yourself. You're still going to grow. But you need to grow into the process, right? So, so while I can do forward somersaults, I certainly wouldn't on this mat choose to do reverse somersaults. Mm. 
Yeah. No, that makes sense. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. Because, because I've not done them as well, and I know that uh, I'm therefore prone to some accident, and I don't yet understand the physics of it. So what I would do under those circumstances is educate myself about the physics of that, if I really desperately wanted to do them, and then go through the process. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So I'm not suggesting you just jump in something uh, without any consideration of personal safety. In fact, a person who loves themselves and does something in harmony with love would not do that. Yeah. You follow? So remember, this is emotional stuff we're talking about here. Doing things in harmony with love also means in harmony with love of self, as well as in harmony with love of others. And quite frequently, we, dis we completely disregard love of self in a lot of our analysis of things that we do. And men are more prone to doing that than women, which is the reason why men have more accidents than women. And men usually have more physical uh, things happen to them than women. And women have more emotional things happen to them than men generally, because women do not try many of the things that men will risk, because women look at it and go, that's crazy. <laughs> Does that make sense? <coughs> yeah. And a lot of them say that because they're terrified anyway, not because of a real, like a real positive feeling they have, you follow? So what we've got to do whenever an event occurs that we're, where we do feel we're starting to get involved in it and we're starting to challenge ourselves, and then an accident occurs, we need to examine the underlying emotional reason or the emotions that get triggered after the accident has occurred. That's why the accident occurs, to trigger those specific emotions. So in, in your case, Jetta, you, you'll realise that actually it imposed limitations upon you immediately. And, and that's the emotion, it's one of the emotions, is the, the, the feeling that you are a limited person and, and is inside of you emotionally that needs to be experienced, cried out, you know? And that's one of the feelings that the accident imposed upon you. Yeah. Okay. Sandra. And I'm... Um, I'm doing okay, I think. I'm um, seven minutes. Yep. Um, so when a person has oh, like oh. something bad happen to them and then they store that fear and because they store that fear, they attract another event. Yep. Um, does that fear become even bigger now because there's another event that was caused by it? Or is it the same amount of fear? Well, if you choose to release the fear, then the next event will be less. If you choose to store the fear, then the next event will be bigger. So it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Keep, it keeps getting bigger and bigger, yeah. And then you have to deal with... Uh, can you hold the mic up? And then you have to deal like one by one, like going down like that. Correct. Now, you had a lovely example of that in the channelings. Remember the lady uh, Mandy? The lady Mandy, um, if you got to listen to that channeling, it was, a, it was a Christian lady, a Mormon lady in the USA, and remember she didn't realise how much fear she was in on earth. She passed over and she surrounded herself with people who were in a similar amount of fear, and eventually more and more things happened that they became more and more afraid, and then it got to the stage where there was only a few of them left terrified, and there's all these people picking them off one by one, and she's there terrified, her fear building and building and building, and then all of a sudden she did a particular thing that all of you at some point are going to have to do and that is and it's a lovely word because it's going to help you a lot it's called surrender right then she surrendered to the emotion of fear and as soon as she did that she was helped immediately to process is it possible for a person to not surrender for like thousands of years because they have so much resistance to fear yes and it is. Have you seen like someone that has been like st uh, still there for like many, many thousands of years and they have not dealt with it? Yes. Yeah, I have friends from the first century who are still in the hells in that state. Yep. It's a choice. This is why I'm talking about your will. It's a choice. <laughs> you need to start seeing it as a choice. It's a choice to value fear over everything else. And unfortunately, many of you ladies are very good at this, valuing fear over everything. A lot of the men won't value fear when it comes to physical safety. So, they, so emotional safety, yes, they still value fear, but physical safety, they'll challenge their physical safety often, right? But most women won't even do that. 
So, so the reality is fear is a big problem and learning to surrender to it as fast as you can is the best course of action. So surrender to it emotionally, not to live in it, which is what the majority of us finish up doing. We we'll talk a lot about fear in, in two days coming up after a break. Yep. All right, well, I, I'm way over time anyway. So what uh, I would like to do now is basically give you a 10-minute break and then we'll discuss how we feel about change as a Q&A more, more. So you have the opportunity to ask more personal questions about change itself. Okay? Thanks, guys.